Retired Admiral James Winnefeld is with us now. He was vice chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff during the Obama administration. Admiral, good morning. Good morning, Gail. Listen, good morning to you. Even before Donald Trump became a presidential candidate, he was very vocal in his criticism of the Obama administration's handling of Afghanistan. And he certainly turned it up a few notches when he became um, a candidate. But last night he said for the first time, when you sit at the desk in the Oval Office, you are forced to make different and difficult decisions. What did you make of what appears to be a big change of heart for him? Well, Gail, this was about the transition from shrill and simple rhetoric on a campaign trail into sort of adult, grown-up decisions on very, very complicated national security problems. And I give the president a little bit of credit for actually listening to his national security advisors, not just the military, but the full spectrum of, of advisors. And he actually changed his mind. It was almost a stunning admission and that he had passes, changed his it's mind. It's very difficult to hear that he's changed his mind. It has, but uh, it gave me the sense that there are some areas where he realizes that he's probably outflanked in expertise and he really needs to listen to these people. And it, I do think that he asked the right questions, uh, which is a president's responsibility to do. Mm -hmm. What are our security interests there versus what are the prices that we're going to have to pay in order to protect those interests? And at the end of the day, he listened to his advisors. And I think he came up with a reasonable way forward. Step in the right direction, you think? I think it's a, it's a reasonable way forward. Um, uh, minor changes to existing policy, to be quite honest with you. But uh, again, a sort of a sustainable counterterrorism approach in Afghanistan. Admiral, the, the cliche question is, what does an additional 4,000 do that 140,000 boots on the ground did not? Would you advocate a full withdrawal at this point? No, I would not advocate a full withdrawal. I think the president was clear in the sort of the ends, ways, means, balance of strategy that our ends remain intact there, and that is to prevent future attacks on this country and on this city from uh, a place like Afghanistan. And he made it very clear that those threats still exist. Uh, what he did was sort of fine-tune the approach. Mm -hmm. uh, on the face of it, uh, percentage-wise, it's a 50 percent increase. It's really only 4,000 troops. Uh, which is a fairly modest increase. Those troops will do more to train, advise, and assist the Afghan National Security Forces to enable them to handle this problem themselves. Uh, do you think that this is really a Korea-like situation, as General Petraeus has said, which is U.S. troops are just going to have to be there for the long haul? Well, you know, and the, the, one of the, the characteristics of 21st century war seems to be that there really is no crisply defined end state, which we as Americans love to have. Uh, if, if you ask, you know, sort of what, is, what does victory mean in Afghanistan, you'd like for it to mean a nice, stable Afghan government uh, that, that, that's not threatened by the Taliban or terrorists. But in fact, it's probably the end state would be that there are no attacks conducted on this country from that nation. A, a commander in Afghanistan once told me, you go to a high school in America and you ask, how many of you are willing to die for your country? And every hand goes up. And then he says, how many are willing to die for your county? And they look around confused. In Afghanistan, it's the opposite. You've got tribes who will fight for a valley or a village, but the idea of a cohesive country is completely foreign to them. How does nation building, uh, I guess that's what happened to nation building as a mission, correct? Well, and I think, you know, the president was a little bit all over the place last night on this. He talked about, you know, we aren't going to do nation building in Afghanistan anymore, and then turned right around and talked about using all elements of national power, helping them with the economy, and having an end state where the Afghans can take care of this problem themselves. That sounds a lot like nation building, but he also made it clear that we're there to, to take out the terrorist threat to defend this country. What are the uh, pressure points on Pakistan? Because the, the Obama administration really struggled with this, yeah. too. You know, of all of our many allies and partners around the world, Pakistan, candidly, is one of the most difficult. Uh, in that sort of South Asian culture, they will undermine you at the same time they support you. Uh, we both have interests at stake in that region, and sometimes Pakistani interests are different from ours, uh, and sometimes they coincide. Uh, there is no black or white, you know, you're either with us or against us with Pakistan. You have to deal with it as it is, and I think it's going to take a lot of diplomatic pressure. We didn't hear uh, Which wasn't mentioned that. last night. We didn't hear a lot about diplomacy last night. Yeah, I, I think the, the real room for diplomacy is to, make, is to make sure that our NATO partners are on board, which it sounds like they are, based on what we're hearing from Jen Stoltenberg, their secretary general this morning, uh, and also uh, intense pressure on Pakistan to step up a little bit more than they have been. Well, right. we'll, keep, yes. we'll keep reporting on it. Admiral, thank you for your analysis. Thank you, Admiral. You're very welcome.